Let's look at another uh, transformation. Here we have h of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of absolute value of x minus 4. So the first thing to do is you have to identify what that parent function is to know what you're shifting around. My parent function is the absolute value of x. And here I started in green again. I want it to be blue for some reason. Okay? And I know that my um, that my absolute value function x starts here at the origin. It has points going out in this direction. And I could continue on uh, at, in that way as well. Now how do you know what to do next? Well, order of operations tell me that I would do uh, parentheses. I don't have those here. Multiplication, I do have that. And then addition or subtraction, if I were um, actually plugging a number in for x, that would be the process I would use. So I would do what's in the parentheses, then multiply, and then add or subtract. And that's the order that I want to do when I have what would be called kind of like a composition transformation or multiple transformations. So the next thing I'm going to handle is this 2 times the absolute value of x. Well, this is where we're doing that scaling. So we have to determine what am I multiplying by. And remember that if I multiply my function by a number, so I am multiplying the function by a number, then this is going to be multiplying my y values by 2. It's going to multiply my y values by 2. And the best way to do that is to just jump in and put some points down that we already know. I know for sure that I have the point 0, 0 in my parent function. I also have the point 1, 1. And I have the point 2, 2. So if I multiply the y coordinate of each of these points by the number 2, I would end up with a new ordered pair of 0, 0, 1, 2, because I'm multiplying the y value by 2, and 2, 4. Now let's go put those points on here. So I have 0, 0, over 1, up 2, and over 2, up 4. So that would be 2, 3, 4. Now one of the characteristics of my absolute value function is that it is symmetric across the y-axis. There's symmetry, right? It's an, it's that's its characteristic. And we're going to use that right now to be able to say, well, this point on the right of the y-axis is the same on the left. And this point over here on the right of the y-axis would also be reflected over here on the left. So I can use symmetry to graph those points there. Now the last thing we're going to handle is the negative 4. So the negative 4 is a vertical shift down by 4. So all of these red points are going to be shifted down by 4. So we take this one here and we're going to shift down. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one, 1, 2, 3, 4. And another one, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops, I could have used symmetry, couldn't I? And down 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I'm going to connect the dots. Now it goes on forever. I only chose those certain dots to graph but it does go on forever. This is the graph of, this green graph, is the graph of 2 times the absolute value of x minus 4. Now, I want to point out, now that we're kind of getting into this, that could you throw this into your ca graphing calculator or any graphing uh, technology and get the same result? Absolutely. But that's not really the point. The point is for you to be able to um, apply a method for us to be able to kind of shift the graph around. It is helpful. I realize you're not graphing anything by hand anymore because we have the technology, but you still need to know this method and it's, it's pretty quick. Now, you can always check your answers to know that you have your graph in the right spot, but you definitely want to know the steps that we're taking to get it there.